just this week, the people at Fort Calhoun came out and said that uh, they found structural problems at the plant. And now they're going to have to be shut down even longer. Structural problems in the nuclear containment that they were unaware of. So, Arnie, maybe you can help me understand about how expensive is it to keep running these plants when they're shut down? Um, and when I say running, I don't mean to have the reactor running and to have the plant providing power, but rather, you know, obviously the plant has to employ safety personnel and engineers and, you know, all of the employees for a plant must still cost money. How expensive is that for a plant that's shut down? Yeah, the, the power plant out in California offers an example of a, a situation where uh, this, this is the, 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 uh, the San Onofre plant. They've got close to 2,000 people, uh, and they're highly paid engineers bringing in you know, upwards of um, $100,000 a year on average. So you're, you're looking at more than $100 million a year, pushing $200 million a year for the, uh, the San Onofre plant to, um, to sit idle uh, for these people to collect salaries, basically producing no electricity. There's two more examples besides the San Onofre plant. The first example is um, Fort Calhoun, and they've got a staff of about six or seven hundred. And again, that's probably sixty to a hundred million dollars a year being spent to keep a plant idle. And the other one here is on the on the east coast is Crystal River down in Florida, and. It's got a huge staff, and, and it's likely costing $150 million a year to keep idle. Now, Crystal River is going to be shut down for five or six years with containment problems. Here's Fort Calhoun plant now has containment problems. Now, Crystal River has containment problems. So these plants will be shut down for five years, and they'll pay the salaries of more than 1,000 people for five years to produce no power. You know, the analogy I like to say is that uh, I like to compare it to the NFL. You know, if you've got a quarterback who breaks his arm, uh, you'll, you'll let him sit out a season. And that's sort of understandable. But the expectation is he comes back at the end of the season. Well, here we've got you know, Crystal River is going to be down for six years. What NFL team would make the business decision to keep their quarterback on the sidelines and pay his exorbitant salary for six years hoping that sooner or later he'll come back and, and, and lead the team again. And, and the same with San Onofre. San Onofre uh, Unit 3 is likely shut down forever, and Unit uh, Unit 2 is going to be shut down for more than a year and, and, and likely never get to 100% power again. And yet we've got this, this expensive quarterback, all of these hundreds and hundreds of highly paid engineers uh, sitting on the sideline, and in the back of our minds, we keep saying, well, sooner or later, it will run. Businesses don't make that decision. The utilities make that decision when they can take the money from ratepayers out, out of your electric bill. The, the utilities, the Crystal River is owned by a utility. And but what that means is that whether it runs or not, the people that, that, that own Crystal River get paid. The same with San Onofre and the same with Fort Calhoun. Whether it runs or not, those staffs get paid because they get it out of your electric bill. The other plants, Kiwani and Oyster Creek, are what we call merchant plants. And when they're not running, they're not getting any money. And management suddenly behaves like business people. They, they pull the plug on a plant and they say, we can't afford to operate this plant. So what we're seeing in the nuclear industry is a split. The, the people that are running merchant plants, the that aren't really connected to any single utility, they just sell power out on the grid, are looking at the balance sheets on these nuclear reactors and they're saying, these don't make any sense. And the same thing is happening to Fort Calhoun or, or San Onofre or Crystal River don't make any sense either. But because ratepayers have been paying these salaries for 10 or 20 or 30 years in their rate base, they don't feel like somebody has just lifted $200 million from their pocket. If ratepayers understood that these plants shut down is like having your quarterback on the sideline for five years, they might demand of their public utility commission, so why are we spending, in the case of Crystal River, $750 million in salaries for people to sit around at a power plant that's not operating? It doesn't make business sense. 
but the utility commissions in, in Florida and California are, are, are turning a blind eye to that. And they're basically in a, a very highly paid employment program for engineers to, to sit around and produce no power. Arnie, wouldn't it be nice if uh, Fairwinds was funded by the uh, ratepayers in the U.S.? Boy, that would take my day, I'll tell you, Kevin. <laughs> just just uh, essentially send us um, 8 million people watch the Fairwinds um, um, website since the Fukushima Daiichi accident. And uh, if everybody just, just left a dollar at our door for every time they, they viewed the site, um, I'll, I'll tell you, we would be uh, uh, 10 times more, a um, 100 times better as I'm reporting the news than we are now. Uh, yes, we don't, we don't uh, tap into your pocketbook uh, um, through, um, through an IV line and drain cash uh, routinely like utilities do. Now, we rely on donations, and uh, it's Thanksgiving, and I hope that maybe Fairwinds is one of the things you're thankful for. Between now and the end of the year, uh, Fairwinds is trying to raise funds both from uh, uh, corporations and large donors and, and also small donors. And I'll tell you, it's very humbling to go to the mailbox and, 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 and get that um, and open an envelope that says, thank you, um, you know, here's, here's $20. I really appreciate everything you're doing. It, it really uh, uh, makes me aware of how little information is out there uh, that the mainstream media is not covering, and we really try our best. But uh, we can't do it for, for, um, for zero funds and would certainly appreciate a donation. Arnie Gunderson, it sounds like you have some action going on in the background there. Um, yeah, there's some kids playing out uh, right outside of my Skype connection with you. <laughs> Joining us via Skype from on the road, Arnie Gunderson, Fairwinds Chief Nuclear Engineer. Arnie, thanks for coming on for this special edition. I also want to remind viewers that there will be no regular Sunday podcast this coming Sunday uh, because of the holiday. So the special edition podcast will stay up until next Sunday.